What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Dude, it's weird because my phone is sideways, and uh, <laughs> I'm sideways in my phone, too. So everything is backwards. Well, you I feel look, like I should sit here. Do you want to fix it real quick before we start? Uh, hmm. Let me see. Let's see. Is there a way I could flip this? Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's because my phone's rotate is off. Hold on. Here we go. Let's try this again. There we go. That's better? All right. I got it. I got to do one. My God, dude. I got something in my eye. Eyelash in here or something. Little thing right there. I think we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, right. Ryan of Until I Wake to the Bay. Oh, yeah. Me, it's me. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> Can you hear all the sounds? I can't hear shit. You can't hear all the sounds that I'm playing? No. Oh, man. I wish. That is a bummer. Try this now. Can you hear this now? Yeah. You can't hear any of that? No. Oh. Oh, I hate it here. That is Take weird. Take me home. Regardless, sir, thank you, thank you for joining. I appreciate your brother. Uh, I want to start off by asking, yo, how was how was the wedding? How was being best man at the wedding, dude? Oh, dude, it was crazy. So sorry, I, I for some reason I have this bowl of food next to me. I'm like, I'm gonna pick it up and start eating it on here, and I'm like, no, 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 it's not the time <laughs> and place. Um, so the wedding was sick. Um, it was actually it was funny because originally. The whole thing is kind of like horror themed, and that's very cool. And I think the that horror I was like, stoked. wedding. Like, yeah, and it, yeah, and I was stoked because like August loves horror and shit like that. He's stoked on it, so I was like, I'm stoked, but it's gonna be interesting because like, how are the elderly people in attendance gonna take something like that? Or like sometimes Christian people are like, oh, it's horror, this and that, whatever. And there's actually a situation I'm not gonna go into detail about, but somebody didn't show up to the wedding because it was horror themed. Uh, which is kind of shitty, but uh, that's not my business. But yeah, so I was a little bit like concerned about that, but I was still down. I'm like, this is gonna be sick. It's totally August and Amber's thing. And uh, originally we were supposed to dress up in costumes of horror characters. I was supposed to be Jason, but uh, then come like the week of the wedding, we find out we're not fully dressing up in that. We're dressing up in like the suit and shit. But uh, we would just have like a prop or a mask. Like I had a Jason mask. Alex had a Michael Myers mask. And then the rest of them had like a Justin Jolly had like a Freddy hand, like a Freddy glove. And That's then Nico just had like a knife. And then uh, August so, was so, just in like suspenders. So like even like family and friends sitting in the audience are in full on character? I would say there was a good, a good, good handful of people. Probably... I want to say like 25, 20 people that were there dressed up in some sort of costume or some way. Um, and like some people actually had like masks on. I seen one dude, he he took it off for sure. It was a hot day and uh, he took that thing off and I seen him sweating in the face. I'm like, I know that shit was hot, dude. I would have done the same thing. I wouldn't have been able to stand that. But um, yeah, it was sick. It was really cool. And it was, it was pretty epic. And I, I think that you know, I was a little bit nervous of uh, of how the, the function was going to go at first. Then being there, I was like, this is actually really pretty. Like, they had they got married. Like, the altar, whatever you would say it was, was a, a casket that, that August had built. And then, like, there was, like, a cool, like, red uh, carpet that we walked up and shit. That was cool. The entry to get into the wedding was, like, a ticket stand. And they gave you tickets with, like, your, your letter that you got to, like, RSVP and stuff. Like they would get tickets to the wedding, so people would just walk up to a ticket booth, and then they would get into the wedding, and it was it was kind of cool. That's cool. It's it's unique. It's different. It's fun. And I'm such a horror film fan. Like I have horror autographs all around this room. Uh, I've got uh, ter the Terrifier, Freddy, uh, uh, Jason, uh, Michael Myers, a bunch of stuff Dude, going on. I have that same tapestry over there. This one. Yeah, except for it was my girlfriend's, well, my ex-girlfriend's, and I it was on this wall here. And uh, I was like, man, that shit makes me sad to see. So I took it down and I gave it to her, and now I regret it because my wall is just plain white. Like, <laughs> there's literally nothing going on on that wall. There's some, some shit that I make a joke about when I talk to her that looks like she stuck a piece of gum on the wall. But it was like some sort of sticky tack to hold something up there. 
but it just looks like an old hunk of gum just stuck on my wall with something on it. Dang, that's that's a trip. You had the same one. Hey, how was uh how was the uh the video shoot yesterday? The video shoot was sick. Um, so <laughs> basically, like we are usually very hands on with our video shoots leading up to the day of shooting. If we like to have it down to where everything, like we know everything, whoever we're working with, like everything is, we got it down. Um, the people that we worked with were very, very professional. Um, like they work with, like uh, I seen like, they worked on the new all time low I prevail music video. And then on the one person's page, I seen stuff like MGK, J Cole, Cardi B, Ariana Grande and stuff, and I'm like, oh shit, Kodak now, Black now was is in that, there. Is, is that something that that you guys say, hey, we like this director, we want to work with him, or is that something that like like Fearless would be like, hey, we think this guy is the perfect guy for this this single coming down the road? So, so basically, with this one, Fearless lined it up for us. We got in a call when we were getting ready for it, and there's like ten of us in this call, um, going over all the details and everything. Basically, they took our idea. And they're like pitching it around. Um, I think the dude's name is Chris over at Fearless. He handles like all the videography stuff um, when they do things like handle things in house like that. And the band just doesn't just go and film with whoever they pick. So he was like shopping it around like the idea and stuff to people that he is connected with. And uh, they were into the idea that they collectively came up with and kind of storyboarded it and had some ideas. And leading up to it, we had no clue what the fuck was going on. Like we we knew that there was going to be a mask or masks. Um, in this thing, but we didn't know what it was going to look like, even though like Justin gave them some ideas and stuff, what it should look like. We didn't know the location till like the day before. We didn't really know what the setting was going to be like much. So it was kind of like a little bit crazy, but like these people are crazy. They're geniuses. They're amazing at what they do. They got this job for a reason and they, they get these people that they work with for a reason. So leading up to it, we were nervous. We're like, what the fuck is going on, dude? And then we get there and there's like security and shit getting us in. There's like 15 people working on the set. And I'm like, dude, I'm used to like one, two wow. people working on the set. This is like a big we budget had, music video like coming out dude, here. It, yeah, it was it was sick. It was crazy. And like the shots that we did see were amazing. There was so there's like 10, 15 people working on the set. Then later on, another 10 people show up. And wow. those are the extras for the music video, though. We had this is the first time we had this. So we had catering. We had a lunch break with the catering. There's snacks and drinks everywhere you go. We had a makeup person, two makeup people, I think it was. Um, so we had like makeup done and not like we didn't like paint our faces or anything crazy. They just come in, fix any like blemishes and yeah. shit like that, did our hair for us. I sat in the chair, the chick starts putting stuff on my face and I'm like, oh, this is cool. And she's like, all right, now what do you do with your hair? And I'm like, this. You know, I just messed it up and then hair spray. That's the same thing. Just start slapping head on. That's that's me. Dude, all yeah, day. my my hair is awful. I've got I've got like the worst hair in the band. Uh, it's it's not very thick and full, unfortunately. <laughs> I got some thin hair. I got something, but at the same time, I'm like, dog. You know, I don't I don't have enough for you to work with, lady. I'm sorry, because she's like, what do you do with this? And I'm like, oh, uh, don't touch it. <laughs> just leave it. But uh. So instead, like after she mentioned something to me, I get a little bit insecure and I'm like, does my hair look fucked up? So what I did is I went and I like wet the ends of my hair and then I messed them up and then I hairsprayed it because I found out recently that you can get your hair wet and then hairspray it and it looks, it stays looking wet. But when I usually do my hair, it always looks dry and like shit because I always tease it and mess it up. And then like I'll mess it up and then I hairspray it. Then it just looks like my whole head is dead hair and it looks dried out from the hairspray. So then I tried the new thing uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago, and I got it wet, and then I hairsprayed. I'm like, all right, that shit's sick. I like that because it looks just, it looks a lot cleaner. It doesn't look so fucking dead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was crazy. Catering, makeup people, hair people, 10, 15 people working there. And like, they were all so cool and so professional. And like, for us, it's like, we're not a massive band or nothing like that. We're, we do pretty well for ourselves. But like we're not no I prevail or all time low or MGK or Cardi B or J Cole or none of them. Could so be, like uh, in time. I mean that would be sick, and I would love to work with most of those artists. Shit, I don't care. Cool. I, I I'm sure you've answered this question a bunch, but uh, I do want to touch base on. I know I know Justin filled in on on some shows when when Cody left. I want to ask, can you can you give me some some positives about the experience of of Cody? how you simultaneously found Justin and how did you know that he was the perfect uh, fill-in man, front man for the band? Like, did yeah, you know right sure. away within within those, those uh, fill-in shows that he was the guy? Yeah, so 
kind of throughout like the course of like the band's history um there was like times where we would just butt heads collectively like with cody and stuff just like artistic differences and things that we would all do differently and then we got to the point where we're like hey we want to take this to like a whole new level and and i think that both parties would be better off going their separate ways and seeing success both seeing success but separately you know, because he's got a strong opinion on things and then everybody else has got a strong opinion on things and stuff. And I think that everybody's talented. I think that everybody has what it takes to to make it big, you know, and stuff like that. And I think that what he released recently was awesome and it's it's great for him. And I think that the song that he put out, um, my um, interpretation of it is that it's, it's like related to maybe uh, a past of alcohol, something like that. Like that's what's going to be the death of him because the song's called The Death of Me. And I was like, damn, dude, that's really cool because naturally when you split up with somebody, you think they're going to go talk shit or something like that and make a song out of it. And instead he was like, he, he did like the best possible thing he could have done. And he went and he released a song that meant something to him. Then working in, uh, in Justin along that time of like uh, partying with Cody, basically I used to make music and be in a band with Justin like 10 years ago. And he was, wait, wait, wait. he was like 16. What was, what was the band name? Uh, so the band was called A Breath Alive. Okay. Um, we weren't big. We were just a I local knew. band in Buffalo. And um, so he was in ABA with me. And um, ironically, our photographer was in that band as well. And at one point or another, August was in that band too as like a filling guitarist and stuff. And then he August was in my second band after that. Um, Justin Jolly went from that band to realizing like he's young. He's not making a whole lot of money because he was like 16, something like that. And uh, so it's like he's just doing life in his own way and stuff. And we were all super young, but um, we all kind of like had some source of income. And when you're that young, it's like you could be hit and miss. You want to go buy toys. You don't want to save money to do shit like this. And you don't really even know what's going on. You don't have the same sense uh, of everything as you do as you grow up. And you're like, oh, shit, I really got to save money and do this if I want to make this a career. Because people don't understand like how expensive that shit does get. And uh, so he, we were all young. He was the youngest and shit. Um, but he was hella talented. He was not a singer at the time. He was just a screamer. But he was always, always an animal on stage and off stage. He's just full of energy and full of life. And he's crazy and he's wild. You know, you, I seen this kid do a handstand on a, on a ledge of a of a of a structure, this stone structure. He was doing a handstand on it about this this big. I'm like, dude, you could only put your hands on that. And this thing was like 30 feet in the air. I'm like, dude, you will die. If you slip, you will die. And that kid didn't give a shit. So he was wild, fun to be around, awesome stage performance, awesome screamer and all that stuff. Um, and then I was hooking him up with a band back in the day, like a few years ago, when um, when Until I Wake first got started. Have you ever heard of the band Windwalkers? Yeah, absolutely. So they were looking for a vocalist at the time, and I lined Justin up to work with them. And uh, he was newer to singing, but he was figuring it all out, and he was getting into singing and stuff, and they weren't... Uh, he wasn't what they were looking for or nothing like that. They were looking for somebody who had more like they were primarily a singer versus primarily a screamer. And he was definitely a dominant screamer at the time. And now he's been getting used to like singing and getting in the habit of it. And he's practicing and he's going to be taking lessons and shit soon just because he wants to be the best he could possibly be since he didn't grow up singing. He grew up screaming and all that stuff. And and Cody left him some pretty big shoes to fill because Cody was really right. on on like sonically. He was a crazy ass singer. Um and for sure, that that's a for sure thing. And uh, so um, set him up in there. He's getting used to singing as we go and stuff like that, like working with them or trying to work with them and get into that. Then he knows like, OK, to be in these bands nowadays and be successful, I got to be more versatile and know how to sing and know how to scream. And so from there, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he just kind of kept gradually like learning how to sing better and better and make it a regular thing for him. And then um, when we had all this shit hit the fan, I hit up Justin jolly and i'm like i'm like yo dude can you make music like a full-time job like can you do this and he's like yeah he's like when do i start and i'm like two weeks you gotta learn <laughs> you gotta learn nine you gotta songs the whole in set weeks. in two weeks yeah you had to learn like nine songs in two weeks was this was this and, like like was this planned like you were on the road with cody and you guys have agreed to mutually split on a certain date or is or was it like a hey no. this is it then it's over you leave tonight we can't play the next couple of shows we need you just in a fly and learn this asap so we can jump back on so we were we were on a tour that for us um as a band still learning still like coming into the scene there was like uh it was a pretty pretty wild tour and there was no <laughs> there was no like um no limits to this tour 
Um, we were all going nuts and shit like that. And some of us go nuts a little bit more nuts and uh, just partying and shit like that. And um, there was like some, some like most of it was kind of like, we get it. We're all partying. We're all going crazy. But uh, butting heads happened. And um, we got to the point kind of where we're like, all right, you know, like that tour was rough for all of us in a way. And the next thing that we do, we got to make super professional. Um, next up was the imminence tour it was like, a, uh, a, like eight days all back to back. No, no days off or anything like that. Just quick eight day run. And we had some, some conflicts come up with opportunities to do the tour. Um, and like it, something wasn't going to work out. I don't want to go into a bunch of details and be weird, but something wasn't going to work out. So we were put in a really weird position, um, where we would have had to like have a fill in for certain dates or just not do certain dates and stuff. And like at that point in discussion about things, things got a little intense and uh, some parties were clashing and things were not right. And we were already kind of like at, at the end of things like, Hey dude, like uh, this is where we have to part ways. So it was kind of like something that was in the making over time. Um, and the, the, the result was probably the best case scenario to just part ways and then like we had to kind of like learn respect for one another over time and i think that we're at that mutual respect level now kind of where uh we're doing our thing and cody's doing his thing and we could both be have success in our own ways and stuff and we don't have sure. any like animosity sure. uh justin justin had a situation online because justin is like he's used to being like dolo like he's a solo artist rapper is he was the rapper prior to this and like he would dabble with the metalcore stuff still go back and forth but he's like on his own and he was only really used to like the local scene. He didn't know like, you know, he was just kind of like, I, I stick up for myself. This is how I've done it since day one, whatever. If somebody says something bad to me, I have to defend myself. And he doesn't understand like what a lot of people don't understand. But some people are higher up the the, the totem pole to where they don't have to give a shit about what the fans say or, or fans say. But uh, some fan came at Justin and he was saying they were saying some negative things and Justin spat back at them and said something back. And then Cody made a post about we're a dumpster fire. And uh, and then Justin and, and Cody got on a call together because Justin is a sweet dude. He's just he's actually a really nice dude. He's just a dude that was sticking up for himself, you know, to somebody. And he doesn't understand, dude, you just got to let those people talk their shit and just focus on the music. This is so, all it's so about. Post, you know, so post Cody leaving, he's still a loving wholehearted no pun intended he, uh, human being just just showing love to the band like hey bro you can't you, uh, you're filling some big shoes you can't you can't do that just let just let just let Cody the haters or hate. Justin well I, I, it, it Justin. sounded it sounded like cuz you made it sound like uh Cody and Justin you said they got on a, a conference call together um about oh yeah so what it was is that uh Justin got got upset about what, something that was said and he was getting defensive over his himself and stuff like that. And uh, Cody's name was brought into it. Very brief. They squashed it literally the same day and stuff like that. Because that's not what Justin's about. That's cool. He ain't about, he ain't about the drama and stuff like that. So basically, he called him up after Cody had posted his video about us and all that. They squashed it all. They talked about it and everything like that and got over it. And, like, Justin hasn't done that shit ever since because we're like, dude, you like you're so new to the industry and you you don't know it so much but like you can't have moments like that happen as as hard as it gets to not defend yourself against somebody trying to like talk shit on your name or ruin your reputation like dude right out of the gates with me with until i wake you know i i was uh i called it facebook fabulous because i was facebook famous at one point in my life so i would just call it facebook fabulous because i never took it serious i would just shit posts and like i was a kid growing up learning things i would talk shit to people i would have fun i had tons of friends and tons of fans and stuff like that and i was careless and i was reckless and all that and i'm like dude like growing up i learned i can't do that shit so it's probably been like 10 years since i've caused like much drama like that on social media and i was telling them like dude no matter how shitty things get with people or fans or fake fans or people that don't want to like you and don't give you the, the time of day or nothing like that, you know, just focus on the, the main thing at hand, you know, and like that shit, will, they'll get tired of it someday or, you know, people will just know like that's just trolls. That's how it works. Every I'm band a, has their trolls. I'm, I'm going to call that the local band advice for the day. Uh, but uh, but dude, I'm hoping you brought some hot sauce because I love doing a trivia. Yeah, it's just trivia. some. 
That's cool. That works. Some typical. Uh, I, if, I got had, nothing fancy in the bridge. No it's worries. big, though. Had you brought, uh, you know, like the craziest shit ever, I, I would have matched you. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go ghost pepper, ghost pepper blueberry. So then whether you get the question right or wrong, I'm going to drink the hot sauce. But the thing is, you get to pick the trivia topic. What movie, Ryan, have you seen, or TV show, have you seen so many times that if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, it's impossible I stump you? I'm going to throw up. Uh... Oh my god, dude. That's... What the hell? There must be a, a, any movie or TV show that you've seen so many times. Maybe The Office, Simpsons, or you've seen, uh, you know, Matrix uh, 50 times. I don't know. It's your I call. Got... That's that's the thing. So how do I stump you if you pick the topic? Oh, shit. I would like to say, like, South Park, maybe. I, I literally own most of the seasons of South Park on physical DVD. I can do South um, Park. I'm looking at my... I'm looking over here at my DVD collection. Um, shoot. It's got to be South Park. Maybe Alice in Wonderland. I don't know. Um, let me think. What? Uh, oh Would you, do you want a tip as a, having done this many, many, like hundreds and hundreds of times with guests? Or do you want to just raw dog it and go straight in? Uh, I like to raw dog. Okay. We're going to go. We're going to go South Park. Okay. And I'm going to look up some really hard South Park trivia for you oh, wow. here in just a second. But um, uh, I want to ask some fun questions because it's going to take me a minute on the side while, while you're chatting with me to look up some stuff. Uh, being a heavily tattooed person myself, I would like to know your first tattoo, your least favorite tattoo, and the most painful. The first one was the, okay. uh, the barbed wire right there. Should I show them as I go? Yeah, sure. So in the inside of my wrist, this is supposed to be a guitar pick. Okay. Uh, it was like it rep it's like resembles the first guitar pick that I ever used. Um, and then this is a tribal wristband, epic tribal wristband. That was the first tattoo that I ever got. Uh, super corny, but it's there and it's probably there to stay. Um, the most painful tattoo is on my ribs here. Eight oh, yeah, hours the, straight. I, I agree. The ribs that are my second crazy. second most painful. I agree. Yeah. Shout out Honeybee Tattoos. That's my ex lover. But, um, then uh, let's see. What what was the other one? Uh, your your one that you like uh, prize possession the most, like your favorite. Hmm. Maybe this, the rose. Maybe the rose on my neck. That's cool. Um, I think that that's that's maybe my favorite, or maybe this one's my favorite. The rib, the ribs, the neck, or uh, maybe my old dog. But this was like the second tattoo that I got, and it's not looking as great as it used to. But I think that's it. Do you have the the fingers up here done or just the knuckles? Oh, dude, no, I just have the, this area. Have the this area me. up here sucks so bad. Really? It sucks. That's that's next. It's painful. Uh, South Park trivia. Here we go. Off. This is like random, completely random South Park trivia. At some I'm point in South Park, Officer Bar Brady, he's constantly looking at stop signs. Before he learns to read, he imagines every stop sign turning into a different language. What language does he read the stop signs at? Now, I know you know who Barb Brady is. He's a popular yeah. character. So what language does he, when he he's looking at the stop signs in this episode and he sees it in a different language, what language is it? I'm gonna have to take a wild guess. I can't, I can't, I don't, I have the slightest clue. I knew this was a bad idea. Um, I'm gonna say the language was it was it's a it's not a made up language. It's the real shit. language. I don't know. I want to say like Spanish or something. It is ah. Korean. Enjoy the hot sauce. I'll enjoy Fuck. it with you. Dude, I swear. <laughs> I swear to God, I was going to say Korean. I was, just, dude, oh my God. You got to go with your first, in, first instinct. All right. Now, I'm going to be suffering more than you. But after this, I would like Perfect. to know the story, while you're enjoying the hot sauce, of the absolute worst show Until I Wake ever played. Everything went wrong. Early days with Cody. How did you guys learn for it, from it so it won't happen again? How much am I drinking of this? Just a, just like a, a swig. Shot. Just a quick swig. Perfect. I ain't getting up. 
I'm going to I'm going to do something really provocative. Let's go. Yeah. There you go. Feel free to Photoshop that. Um, worst show. So we were on to Crown the Empire. Might have been the first show that we ever played with them. Uh, with them on that tour, we showed up. This venue's immaculate, sick ass venue. Uh, probably, yeah, it's definitely the first show we played with them. And uh, I think it was in like, was it in like Albuquerque? I don't remember where it was. I know it was a far, far ways away. Cool ass, like little, little mini theater looking thingy. Um, but uh, so we were nervous. First show, big ass crowd. With Crown the Empire, we just met all of the dudes on the tour right before we played this show. We play, something happens with our quads, and uh, we're all playing different parts of the song. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, okay. we're all playing different parts of the song. Something happened with our ears, something happened with the quads. August is like playing the chorus to something, we're in something else. I don't know if that's the exact how it went, but uh, it was a mess. It was so embarrassing. And, uh, I mean, I think generally we still had a fun day and we still crushed the show. It's kind of like those first show things, like getting into the tour and stuff. Um, but yeah, that was definitely probably the worst show. Does anyone behind the scenes ever go, Little Lotus, and August turns yeah. around? Yeah. He's definitely been called Little Lotus before. Uh, gets Ronnie Radke sometimes. <laughs> gets... Uh, there's a couple other ones that I can't remember off the top of my head, but Little Lotus is definitely the the uh, main one. Let's say, Ryan, we're backstage. It's a big festival. It's uh, Rocklahoma or, I don't know, any, any of these big festivals that you guys constantly do. What are you doing backstage? The hoorah right before the intro plays, you guys run on stage. What is, what is the ritual? I'm sure Justin's doing some kind of vocal treatment with Honey's Waters or something like that, but what are you and August and the rest of the band doing behind the stage um, before you right before you run out so we do like the all hands in thing we'll sit there usually like it's uh until i wake something like that that we'll say we'll kind of like bounce around hype ourselves up we'll do some stretches and all that stuff because like we're there's a lot of movement during our show so i always try to stretch out um and uh i guess that that's really it you know we don't do nothing like too crazy sometimes the the children get a little out of hand and just start randomly yelling and the children. that's fine too. <laughs> yeah. That means Nico and Justin or okay. Jolly. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just something that they developed. I, I got time for a handful more and, and I'm gracious for your time, brother. I really, really appreciate it. Um, after let's say hypothetically the, the next gig is the biggest one of all. For some reason, it's like 100K deep. It's only one stage, main stage, opening for Metallica or some shit. Craziest show ever. You can pick anything you want to eat after the show. This is probably a night where the boys are partying, drinking, smoking. After that goes down, what are you telling the caterer? And this man is a Michelin chef. He can make anything in the world. What is he making for you as your favorite meal after this gig? Um, probably something with some steak involved. Some how do you, steak cook, how do you steak. cook your steak? How do you cook your steak? I like my steak medium well. Oh, medium well. Okay. Yeah. No blood. Um, no blood. Not really. I mean, I will eat the blood, but, uh, primarily I get medium well. That's cool. But blood's cool too. Um, <laughs> some steak lately, uh, just the other day, Alex cooked me some steak and eggs when I popped over to his house and I was like, that shit slaps, dude. I get it now. Cause he's like, it's what I eat all the time, every day. I eat steak and eggs, and I'm like, it's a good amount of protein, good meal, tastes good together. So if this dude can make some gourmet steak and eggs, that would be perfect. I would say until our, our uh, wholehearted and and the reverence are are fairly different as far as the, being the two new singles. What would you mm -hmm. say is like a good example of what fans could expect? from the next either EP or album release, which I'm sure that's all stuff that you guys have planned. We just can't discuss it yet. But can is there is there one or the other that we can kind of look forward to, or is it a mixed bag of of a little bit of everything that you guys got coming for us? Um, So it's a mixed bag, for sure. Uh, we, have, we cover a lot of bases. There's going to be a lot of stuff that uh, feels more familiar to people. There's a lot of stuff that feels completely unfamiliar to people. Um, so it's kind of hard to... Uh, 
to compare it to much. Um, but like, given Justin's past music, his history with music and stuff, you can kind of get an idea from that. You know what's to come. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's the next song we released that we just filmed the video for is a rock song. You know, I know people are waiting to hear that singy singy stuff, so they're gonna get that. Um, the Reverence is the heaviest song on the album. We had to drop that. So, the, 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 so there is an album for yeah, sure. It's an album. It comes out at the end of the year. It's called Renovate. You can know that stuff. Uh, is this announced yet? I don't even know this is all announced yet. I don't, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's announced, but I'm announcing it. <laughs> is there to follow up on that? Is there is there any? You don't have to tell us, but can we expect features? And if so, and if not, is there a person that you've always wanted? Like, who do you look up to? Not only in the bass world, but as far as like for my band. Knowing that this is the just the sound that Justin can create, I think this person would be a perfect feature for the album. I don't know if that actually went down, but who would that person be? Okay, so for the perfect, so basically what I did uh, when we were doing this album is I considered while going through the album, like we don't want to force features or anything like that. It's got to make sense so that way sure. when we pitch it to somebody, it's like undoubtedly they want to be on it. It's crazy. Um, Honestly, I can tell you this. Originally, the Reverence was supposed to feature Will Ramos, but uh, but we ended up not doing that because uh, just like some sort of uh, behind the scenes stuff, there was no problems or anything like that. We just went a different way with the song, um, and uh, so we had we had talked about a handful of features for the album. I think for me, like a uh, feature that's not on the album, but I would have loved to have if it made sense was Ali Sykes because he is my favorite oh, five yeah. miles. He's the best. He's, he's untouchable. Bring Me the Rise is an untouchable band. They can't really do any wrong. It's just everything that they do is is just like the best. And uh, yeah, that band is just they ain't going anywhere. They're just gonna get bigger and bigger and, and be crazier and crazier. And they're like changing the whole entire way that people even look at this kind of music because. They started incorporating the features of all these different artists outside of their realm, even. And that's so interesting and fun and cool. And they could do that because they're amazing and they're crazy. Um, so kind of like I think the next album will probably dabble with some features on songs. Um, we didn't press it too hard with this album because we wanted to kind of like we took a step back. And when working on this album, we kind of considered it like album one, you know, because it's got Jolly on it. Yeah. And you know, we're we're kind of considering it like re the basically why it's called renovate is because we tore everything apart essentially on the inside, rebuilding it up, and exactly starting kind of like fresh in a way. I like that title. Consider- it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Like yeah, and then like that's the intro part, like it uh, inward, like for the band, and then for like a lot of the song themes for people to hear is kind of about like yourself personally, like on the inside, like rebuilding yourself, getting through like depressing times working on your mental health and stuff like the album is pretty pretty geared towards mental health um there's still like a a couple different songs throughout it that that relate to like different things but it's all kind of just like life and uh man versus self type stuff um so that's kind of what helped us decide that this album is going to be renovate um renovates the next single to come out and uh so yeah that's kind of where we went with it um i don't know if i'm rambling too much but uh there's going to be some rap on the album i'll tell you that some rap. Oh, so so Justin spitting. Justin spitting. Yeah, it's sick. It, literally, song one on the album starts off with bars. Oh like, shit! And then it gets heavy. Okay. It, it's, people are gonna like it. They're gonna like it a lot. Um. So it's funny too because like generally when you go through your songs, you're like, oh, this is definitely a single. Oh, this one's definitely a single. And we start releasing these singles, and I'm like, fuck, dude. There's so many other good songs that I would have probably swapped out a song with and been like, no, this one's a single. But I'm like sitting there, I'm like, it doesn't really matter because people are going to pick and choose what songs they really enjoy. And it's just the song's going to do justice for itself when it drops. And, and people are like, oh, I like this one the most. And this wasn't even a single. Because if you look at like um, Bring Me's latest album, there's like three songs on there that I would have made singles, right. you know, out of that album. Like, I don't think that Top Ten Statues uh, was a single. I don't think that that one was. I think they released a video to it after the fact because it popped off. But I don't think that that one was a single. Um but yeah, so we kind of have the same thing going on where I think that maybe there was better choices for singles than the ones that we released. But so far, they're doing well. They're cool and shit like that. And of course, like 
throughout the the weirdness that we've had lately with with uh, the change up and stuff like that. It's kind of like rebuilding, and you know you have to recreate fans or earn people back that are like, oh, they're gonna fall off, or maybe some people are like, oh, they did fall off, but just wait till you hear the rest of what we have in store because you're gonna like it. And then you know just kind of like leaving that alone at that. You know the music will speak for itself someday when it comes out. And people are gonna really fuck with it. So oh, yeah, that's that's great. We we're excited, man. I got I got two more questions for you, and then we'll let you go, sir. Uh, fan question coming from chat. How has your experience been with Fearless? And then I'd like to follow up that with, uh, how did you know when when it's time to do the, the signing? I know this was a couple years back, but how did you know that that was the right label? Was there other offer considerations? Uh, how did they take care of you from, the, the show's called Local Band Smoke Out, so most of the people that watch the show are, are unsigned bands. They, they don't know the experience and treatment that you guys okay. get. So if you could touch base on that. All right, I'm going to tell you some cool stuff. So along, so with Fearless, Fearless is amazing to work with. All the people are really great at Fearless. I love them. Sometimes I'll text them on the side, just chat and shit. Um, they take good care of us. Um, I think that, like, the only thing that's different in uh, not my favorite way between being independent and being signed is, like, the scheduling part of things. Um, like, we're releasing a single. I'm going to tell you this. You can probably guess. But we're releasing a single every month up until the album drops. And the way that I liked to release music when I was running the show was every month and a half to two months, we would release a single because people that are in bands know your Spotify monthly listeners go by months. And then at that peak of the month, the 30th day or whatever it is, it starts to take that dip down a little bit, at least a little. You might keep yeah. a lot of those those listeners, but it's going to dip and that's fine and that's normal. So I like to keep things at like that, that rate where it's like right when they start to dip, yeah. they shoot back up. And like right now, it's like we got to release every month, which feels like pretty rushed. And it's cool. I think it's fun and it's going to be fine and all that stuff. But uh, it's definitely maybe going to probably help keep bumping the numbers up. But we don't get a lot of time to like market these things. And everything feels a little bit rushed as far as like we just had to shoot out to New York City to film this video that originally we we're supposed to film a different video. Like Renovate was supposed to release when Reverence did. And then they got flip flop last minute. And then now Renovate releases next. And so that stuff was kind of tough and kind of hectic. But that's my only real problem with it. Other than that, they're all awesome. It's a great label to be a part of. Uh, it's really cool. And um, they were in our top five. Our top five for uh, for labels, sorry, was uh, <laughs> it was Sumerian, Fearless, uh, Epitaph. Wrong button. Uh, Sumerian, Fearless, Epitaph. What the hell are the other two? So these are, all, these the are all at the same behind. time. Sumerian, Epitaph, Fearless, probably uh, Hopeless, or somebody else. All are okay. Well, those are there's there's multiple deals on the table, but but Fearless. Okay. So we didn't hear anything from Epitaph. Who we did hear from is, this is fun facts. We were supposed to be the debut band for Thriller, but Fearless's uh, alumni and current roster was really pretty to us. We never been signed by signed to a label before and any of our past projects this was a, the first thing we're like dude they got i prevail wage war pierce the veil under oath the plot and you all these crazy ass bands they had motionless for a bit and ice nine kills so we're like damn dude like that looks really fucking cool maybe we'll tour with those bands that didn't happen but maybe we'll tour with those bands someday not yet hopefully like not yet it didn't happen hopefully it does in the future we did some shows with under oath that's pretty sick but uh so um we turned down thriller we're talking to Bob before he bought Thriller. Even even knowing Thriller. that Thriller is kind of like related to Fearless, knowing right. this, then you and you saying that you guys would have been like this flagship like debut label band. Yeah, so, that, that uh, is that is scary because it's it's very scary. Yeah, it's very yeah. scary knowing that yeah. even though they're involved, they got some big homies and some, oh, and some weight under their belt. But and, and Bob Becker. That dude is is the man. Like he is so personable. He's so fun to be around. He really is like hands on with his artists. He takes care of those bands. So like, you know, to be with Fearless is amazing. Um, but like now knowing Bob more and stuff like that and like understanding the label situation more, I'm like, damn, would I have done it differently? Who knows? But like there was uh, the, the offer was cool and everything sounded really cool, but it sounded really scary. So um, we didn't go with Thriller. We, we talked to UNFD a little bit with Sumerian. So there was UNFD, Sumerian, a handful of other labels, but uh, but Fearless was the go-to. They're a sick label, awesome to be a part of. The team is great that we have and everything like that. They're super good to us. 
and their roster's sick. So I was like, all right, you know, fearless it is. Let's do this thing. And and like when I got that email, that first email, it went like this. It was from uh, from Rigo. It goes until I wake X fearless records. And I was like sitting in my room, I'm like, dude, I'm shitting my pants. What's going on right now? Is this real life? I screenshot it, send it to all the dudes. I'm like, they want to hop on a call. And then uh, so I was on a call with him and Bob, and we were all chatting about the situation, like where they wanted us to what they wanted us to do and ideas because they were going back and forth. They're like, we got this offer for fearless, but this offer for thriller. And then they ended up buying our whole back catalog. So they own all of our music. And that's pretty cool. Um, because it looks, if you look online or something someday, when we have a Wikipedia, it's almost like we're never going to look like we were like an independent artist, which is kind of fun. It's kind of cool. It's almost like they thought we were sick right out the gate. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I think I'm more, I think I answered, things <laughs> you, you gave me a lot of knowledge right there i'm gonna leave this last question uh i i kind of find this one to be an important one but uh, i know you're from buffalo new york originally correct yeah is there is there a handful of buffalo bands that uh that you still fuck with on a regular basis local bands that aren't signed i would like to know who those bands are and and or a band or two back in the day before until i wake blew up or before the previous band uh that you mentioned with justin that that you know these bands should have made it from but they unfortunately uh, everyone everyone's hand is different but but who were, right. who were some badass buffalo new york bands we need to be checking on all right so the ones that that the general public wouldn't know about like i could say like i mean every time i die is from buffalo everybody knows every time i die they're crazy so the local bands um back in the day when i first started music kind of a band that paved the way in the local scene that was almost signed with sumerian um, was a band called My City, My Secret. Um, oh, yeah. They were super sick. They were kind of like uh, Woe Is Me style music back in the day when it was like popping off and shit. Um, and like they were really cool, really good. The performance live was nuts. They were kind of like, you know, that staple band in Buffalo. They're like, mm-hmm. you want to play shows with them or you want to be like that band? And they were just, they were a really cool ass band with a bunch of uh, solid artists, musicians in, in it and all that. Um, right now, it's like between building until I wake. I stepped away from like the local scene. I just kind of like hibernated basically sitting in my room, focusing on how to make this band pop. Um, and I kind of fell out of the local scene. Then when we started playing shows locally and stuff and doing some things, when we would come through town or we have like a end of the world party, we call it, it's at the end of the year. We book, like we have like local bands play and we put them on and shit like that. Um, so some of the bands that I pick out to play that show is a, there's a band called an easy death. They're super cool dudes. We know they them. Remind we know me. them. Yep, uh, they remind me of like an A Day to Remember type band. Yep. Super cool dudes, super fun, uh, nice dudes. I always will have them on our shows when we play in Buffalo just because they're pleasant to have around and they don't have any drama or beef. Um, then there's uh, there's an artist that was also, ironically, originally a solo artist called Tim the Truth. Now he's got a, he's like a metal artist now and he's got a band backing him. That's that's still his band's name now. As, an, as a rap artist, it was Tim the Truth. Now with his band, Tim the Truth still. He's really cool. He's got a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline. I heard someone release music at his show the other day. Um, so that was sick. Um, then let me think. Who else do we got here? Uh, there's a band. I think they're out of, they're close to Buffalo. They're out of Rochester that our manager actually just picked up two called Glass Waves. Yeah. Um, they're kind yeah, of we, within the same realm as we us. Know, we know them too. Yep. Glass, Glass Waves is sick. I think those dudes are going to do big things. Um, wait, wait, wait. Hmm. Did you just accidentally say that Glass Waves might be coming to Fearless? I didn't say that. You didn't I, say that. No, no, this is not a hint. I, I can't. You didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, I don't want to. I don't want to steer anybody in different directions or the wrong direction. I don't know if they're working on a label deal or anything. like that. I don't like even that. know Maybe what band are. we're talking about. Right? I never heard of that band. Before. I don't know shit. I just know that. <laughs> uh, we put them on to, I figured out that they were picked up by Dave, our manager, and I was like, yo, let's throw them on the end of the world party. It'll be cool for everybody. It'll be fun for you. It'll be fun for them and stuff like that. Kind of like, you know, totally. we're, we're partners in this shit, doing the damn thing. Um, let me think. So one of my buddy's bands that I've kind of done some stuff for, um, trying to help him uh, get through, like, basically he's new to the scene and he's new to being like a, like a, let me think. He, he's done like a lot of covers in the past, a lot of karaoke. And then he finally built a band. I helped him build it and stuff like that. Kind of like uh, I named the band. They're called Hush Hush. Uh, it's kind of like a Pierce the Veil style band. They're We've heard them, We've heard them did... too. 
we we, yeah, told, we, we do the show was... just for for context we do the show almost every single day and we jam about 80 or 90 local bands a day from all over the world and it's like how we discover all kinds of music and uh, i think yeah. i think we've jammed like every single band that you've mentioned out of buffalo oh, yeah. some some badass some badass bands but uh Ryan, we reached the time limit. And I apologize, sir, but uh, this is this is a blessed uh, blessed interview, and thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I, I would like you, sir, to take the floor, uh, promote anything and everything that you'd like everyone to know, obviously about the uh, the album coming out at the end of the year. But the floor is yours. I see you with the hot sauce. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. But yeah, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you for your time and and plug promote anything and everything. All right. Yeah. So we got. We just filmed that video for Renovate. It's going to be coming out mid to late October. Um, so we got a little time before that one comes out. But we're going on tour of Rain City Drive, Belmont, um, Nightlife, and uh, Siamese. That's, that's right, right? That's a dope yeah. lineup. That's a dope lineup. Yeah, we leave September 25th. First show's in Atlanta, September 26th. A lot of the shows are selling out. So if you're planning on going, get your tickets ASAP. I just seen the updated flyer for that. And it looks like most of the shows are low tickets. A lot of them are selling out. It's going to be a cool ass time. Uh, Rain City Drive's new music is fantastic. And uh, I've been a fan of them for a bit, um, but I never listened to them like like this. And now I just got into their music, like getting ready for this tour. I'm like, oh, shit, dude, they, they're really good. And like they're kind of like an underdog, it's, it seems. But I think that this new album is popping off and doing really well for them. Um, but uh, for, let's see, self-promotion for Intel, I, I don't know if I have anything else. Every month we're releasing a new song. There's gonna be tons of tons of different stuff. You're gonna hear rock songs. We're actually gonna release a song. It's a it's a rock song, super super nostalgic. It's gonna be played at emo nights everywhere across the the country when this song drops. And it's gonna become in 10, 20 years from now, it's gonna be one of those emo hits that you always hear when you go to emo night. It's gonna make you feel good in the heart. It's gonna make you want to hang out with your friends, party with your friends. That's my kind of party, bro. That's my kind of party. Thank you, dude. Yeah, dude. It's gonna make everybody feel good. It's such a good ass song. The label loves it. Our management loves it. We think that it's gonna be the one that kind of sets the bar for the future. And uh, is, so, that, is that why it got? I'm not trying to stall you longer, but is that why it got swapped to single three? That song is. Uh, that song's actually gonna be single five. Oh, renovate is single three. Renovate's a sick one too. But uh, the one that's gonna kind of bridge the gap is gonna be. Renovate rock song that comes out late October. The next one's gonna be a metalcore song. Um, it's pretty singy, but it's like until I wake standard shit. And then uh, the last song that we drop is gonna be, oh man, I almost told you the name. I can't tell you the name yet. But uh, it's you gave it's us so be, much. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. It's, it's gonna be a good one. You gave us so much today. I feel like the title of the song is the least important thing. But but uh, dude, this is so much fun, man. I I appreciate you yeah, hanging, having blast. some laughs, um, chilling. This is good vibes, man. The band is awesome. We wish you guys nothing but success for real. Thank we're, you so we're, much. We're excited about the album release. You said at the end of the year, we can expect that, but a single every single month leading up to it. You guys about to hit the 500K on Spotify. I saw today, 498. <laughs> oh, no. 498, it's coming. But Ryan, thank you so much, bro. Enjoy the rest of, thank your, you, of your evening. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, I'll tag you on some shit tomorrow, man. This is fun. Thank you. All right. Hell yeah. Ryan and Matil, I what? Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Thank you again. See you, dude.